Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Eleanor and I will be your host for today. Before we begin and to check if everything is okay, can everyone please write in the chat box at the bottom of the screen where you are listening to us from. I know that we have uh, registrations coming from different parts of the world. Uh, we have people from Nigeria, <clears throat> India, Philippines, South Africa, <clears throat> USA. Hello, uh, Aliyah from Nigeria. Okay, so just type in the chat box so that we can recognize you later. Welcome to HALT's Virtual Skills Lab. This session is an opportunity for you to join like-minded people from all over the globe, hear from our professors on the latest topics and trends, and level up your knowledge in all things business and cultural. For any of you joining a HALT event for the first time, I just want to give you a little bit of background about us. HALT is a school that focuses on the future, firmly rooted in the real world of dynamic global business. As a HALT student, your entire curriculum is geared toward practical experience that aims to transform your mind as well as your skill set. From, from our undergraduate program through to specialized masters, full-time and part-time MBAs, and live online options, we bring together creative, open-minded people from all over the world who want to do more than just study business. Our students are ready to jump right in. So more information on our programs and the upcoming scholarship deadline can be found at halt.edu. Before I introduce today's speaker, I would like to do a little bit of housekeeping. A recording of the webinar will be sent out to everyone via email in the next few days. Professor Terence's masterclass will last approximately 45 minutes, including questions. If you wish to ask a question, please write it in the Q&A box. Not in the chat box, please, so that uh, it's easier for the professor to read the questions at the end of his lecture. And to begin, joining us today's masterclass is Hall Professor Terence Tse, who will lead us in the discussion on numbers and narratives, the burger and fries of today's finance. Professor Terence teaches financial management, M&A, and tech courses at Halt International Business School's London campus. He is also co-founder and executive director of Nexus Frontier Tech, a London-based AI company. A well-sought-after speaker, Professor Terence is an author of three books, including The AI Republic, Building the Nexus Between Humans and Intelligent Automation, which is an international bestseller on Amazon. His latest book is coming out next year to be published by MIT Press, so let's watch out for that. So without further ado, I now give the floor to Professor Terence Tse. Thank you very, very much, Eleanor. Thank you very much to all of you who were able to join us today. Thank you very much for taking the time uh, to uh, come to this session uh, and listen to me. Um, I, you know, like I'm surprised by the fact that you would even turn up simply because the title like, uh, of the talk today is really a mouthful, right? Narratives and number, burgers and fries. Um, so I think there is a need for me to first explain what exactly I'm like, uh, you know, I, like, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I should be like, uh, I'm really Anyone, like I really want to talk about. The fact is this, in the past, as we shall talk later, like, uh, you know, go deeper later, right? Um, we have been like, uh, you know, like uh, the world has been very, very deep rooted into using numbers. This is especially the case in the business world. So yeah, th this is one reason why, you know, like a finance, if you look at many CEOs of today's business, a lot of them actually came through, you know, like uh, from the job of being a CFO, right? So basically they were in charge of numbers, in charge of money, in charge of where to find the money to fund the company. Very rarely you would see you know, for instance, someone from human resource, director of marketing, will eventually go up to the CEO role. Now, I am not saying that it is right or wrong. What I'm saying is that as an observation, it tells us a lot about how much emphasis we actually put on numbers, you know, especially like, you know, like using numbers to interpret how like how business works. 
Having said that, what we have started to see is that uh, stories, narratives have actually become more and more important. Whereas it used to be the case where numbers are the burgers, you know, if you like, you know, when you order a plate, like a, you know, a, a burger dish in the restaurant, you will actually have the burger and that used to be the numbers. Narratives, the story, they are just there for like a, for supplementary purposes. They are there as an extra, like the fries, right? Or the chips, as we would say it in the UK. But lately, what we have started to see is that, you know, the role has actually reversed. The stories have actually become a lot more, uh, 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 you know, like uh, important uh, in driving people's decision. A lot more, um, you know, essential in how companies actually, like, uh, you know, create the prospect of the business. And a lot of the time, we started to see there's not much, even numbers, to actually back the conditions, right? Back, back, back the claims. So. We started to like, uh, see that the narratives have become the burgers, you know, like, uh, whereas numbers are becoming the fries. Now, um, is that a good or a bad thing? Uh, you know, like, I think like, uh, the key, as we shall see, is that both of these are important. The question is, you know, in the current context, what exactly, you know, like, uh, you know, like uh, what, where exactly are we actually going? And this is what I really want to actually spend the time on in the next 40 minutes or so, you know, to talk about, you know, some of the observations I have made. Now, um, once again, you know, as Eleanor was saying, right, if you have got any questions, please, please, please put it into the Q&A box, not the chat. I cannot actually read the chat and talk at the same time. I am a man. I cannot multitask. So please put it in the Q&A. Uh, if like uh, I may even answer some of the questions as like as we get along. Now, before we actually get into the um, you know get into the the, uh, the the you know talking more about stories and numbers, let me actually like uh, you know like uh, walk you through one of the you know like uh, walk you through one of the like a uh, uh, you know uh, you know an like an observation right, and that is we will start with something called the uh price earning oops ratio okay now if you have done finance before you would know what the you should know what the pe ratio is because it is one of the the most important um matrix if you like one of the most important indicator as to how good like uh, you know where, where, how where, where, what is happening to the companies for those of you who have not done finance before, do not be worried because I'm going to actually explain to you what exactly the PE ratio is. So what PE ratio is actually saying is basically this, you know, is the price per share. Okay, divided by, so basically share price, okay, divided by like the net, you know what, I'm going to actually like make it even easier. The profit per share, okay? So if you have got like, a, if there is a share that is trading at $100, okay? And um, the company is generating $1, you know, like, a, you know, like, a, sorry, like a, it's generating $1, right? What it basically means is that the, like a, the ratio is 100 times, all right? That's basically what it is, like I say, right? So if you hold a share, and uh, the share, like the company is giving you $1 in profit as a result of you holding a share and it's trading $100, it is 100 times. Now, what it basically means is this, you know, lots of people, rightly or wrongly, all right, let's assume that it is a correct way of like, uh, you know, interpreting it is this, the bigger the number, the better, all right? The reason why the bigger the number, the better it is, is simply because, you know, People tend to think, right? Okay, the company is generating a like a, you know, is 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 the share price is very high, which basically means that the company is going to do well, right? You know, otherwise people will not actually go and rush to buy something if they don't think it is a good idea to buy, right? All right, now that's basically what the, like a PE ratio is is actually looking at where the like a, you know the share price is right now compared to you know how much the company is making today 
which leads us to the next thing, like a next, like a next, like a next thing. And that is, I want you to do something for me. And that is, I want you to go and Google the PE ratio for four companies for me, please. One is Meta, which AK, like a formerly known as Facebook. The second one is Apple. The third one is Toyota, which is the largest car manufacturer in the world, you know, by volume at least. Uh, and the last one is Tesla. I would appreciate it if you take one minute to go and Google and try to tell me what are the PE ratios, like what the PE ratios are, and put it in the chat, not the Q&A box. Go, 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 go. And see what you can find. I'm waiting. Hopefully, there will be someone like a uh, you know someone like among you who would be uh, you know, like a Google PE. All you need to do is Google PE ratio meta, and then you'll be Toyota is about eight point five. Thank you, thank you, Abdul, thank you. So I'm gonna call it nine times. Make it easier. Whoa, RMB, thank you. It is two hundred and ten times. Very good. Okay, what about meta? Yeah. So like uh, William, like, like it's about two hundred. Yep. Okay. Meta. Anyone? Meta and Apple. Meta is about sixteen times. Yep. Okay. Very good. It's about right. And things change because share price changes, right? So and Apple. Anyone? Twenty-seven times. Okay. We will run with these numbers. All right. We will run with these numbers. So thank you very, very much of you, like to those of you at home. Now, think about it. What it's basically saying is this, you know, um, if you look at like a, a, a company, like, like let's look at Meta, okay? Like, so Meta is basically 16 times, which basically means that the share price is trading at $16. No, sorry. Which basically means that if the share is trading, uh, so if the company is making one dollar in profit per share, the share price like uh, would be sixteen dollars. Which like in some shapes or form, it is suggesting that you know like uh, you know the 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 uh you know the the shares are not really being chased by that many people. Otherwise, you know the supply and demand would not be there to actually like a uh, support like a uh, you know higher you know a higher PE ratios a la Apple. What you can see as the odd things out here, of course, is Tesla. And the fact is this, how is it possible that Tesla ha can have such a huge and gigantic, like a, you know, like a, a PE ratios? Let's not forget that uh, Toyota has got in only a nine times and Toyota is supposedly the largest company in the, uh, you know, in when it comes to car manufacturing. So what therefore is driving Tesla to have such a two, like, you know, to have a 210 times, you know, like a, you know, like a PE ratio. Now, in order to answer that question, I, I don't pretend that I'm holding the, like the, the key answers to that question. What I can do is to offer some ideas as to, you know why this is happening, all right? But you know, let's now look at you know, like uh, you know the you know something about numbers, and then we will talk about you know what narratives are. You know how like you know why is narratives like uh, important? So let's talk like a uh, like a uh, numbers, right? Numbers have always been you know like uh, you know like a uh, one of the uh, uh, um, you know one of the those things that like uh, companies executives scientists values a lot right as a matter of fact you know like uh, one reasons why we all love numbers right you know like in a sense that you know we all uh, appreciate you know the the, the the advantages of numbers is that it actually creates precision it is it sounds precise it sounds accurate it sounds uh you know like a, you can really describe something in detail any one of you who has done like a you know like a going to actually do finance one of the most like uh you know like the best things about finance is, like a, in, in in a sense or uh, is, is one of the best things about finance as a subject or as an aspect of looking at a business is that it allows you to have some ideas as to where you're like, a, you know, like a, how your companies are performing, 
these are these the others right so if your company is you know like a, has got like a you know has 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 got a growth all right of three percent whereas all the other companies has only got a growth of one percent you know that your company is in that respect doing better than the others right it gives us some idea um as a matter of fact you know it's not just some idea in this case it actually tell us right tells us how like uh, you know how much growth the company has got right you know it is something that allows us to work with this is one reasons why you know even if you like uh, you know if you are uh, uh you know like, like giving me an evaluation right what what really counts a lot of the time as a professor, like, uh, you know, from a school perspective is that, yep, students can say this professor is great. This professor is lousy. Ultimately, these are good, like, uh, these are good input, but what people do, like, a, like a, what really the focus is almost always on, it's basically the score that I actually receive, a number that I actually receive, right? So because, like, uh, if you think about it, you can say uh, Terence is great as a professor because of the list of things. Terence is lousy as a as a professor because of a list of like a uh, reasons, right? They are difficult to memorize. But if we can say, you know what, Terence is a three out of four. That is completely like a, you know that that is a lot easier to actually like a, you know get people to retain the information. And that's I think one reasons why your know, numbers are powerful. As a matter of fact, you know in academic like a, you know research, a lot of the time there is you know, like a, you know you can separate the research in terms of qualitative and quantitative. Quantitative research basically studies that use numbers are almost always valued higher than the qualitative like uh, you know things simply because it sounds like it sounds uh, sophisticated right numbers are also objective you know seemingly objective because you are measuring the world and therefore it is not like hey what is your opinion on something what is your opinion on something is you having given a subjective like a subjective view numbers on the other hand is measuring how things are actually happening so you know with that you know like a you know like a, you can see the attraction the attractiveness of numbers the fact that numbers are like allows us to you know like a, to like a, to hold a subjective like sort of objective view right and it is a lot like a, giving us an impression of control right and you know like a, as I said like uh, you know numbers also imply control in a sense that if you cannot measure it you cannot manage it this is the reasons why you know we are all given a score I mean like let's face it even in social media what a lot of the time what really counts is what number of followers right and the likes you have got you know like these are the two like uh, you know, like a most in like a vital uh, uh indicators as to whether people like uh, find the information useful but let's face it honestly whether people actually find the post or social media twitter like you know it's useful it's totally and completely like a subjective but you know we rather relied on numbers so you know we can see that it is not as great now the problem with numbers right let's take a look at this first Anyone here, like uh, you know, who who is um, who don't like math, right? You will see that, and like uh, you know, like a a big spreadsheet is a horrible thing. You know, like a very comprehensive big like a spreadsheet is 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 scary. It is scary, and as a matter of fact, people like to build big spreadsheets in order to show that. Okay. Not necessarily to intimidate, but I guess, you know, is to actually give an impression that it has taken into account uh, different conditions. Uh, it is a very comprehensive view of things, right? Okay. Whereas, you know, like uh, the problem here is this. If you look at the four charts there, there is a difference between accuracy and precision. Now, the one of the like uh, one of the you know like uh, one of the things that we do like uh, the, these days we use the term accuracy especially with the arrival of AI tend, people tend to use the term accuracy all the time, but we tend to use the term accuracy and precision in exactly the same way right being able like a uh, you know like a uh, you know ex, in, like interchangeably as if they don't have a difference there is however a difference as you can see what accuracy like uh, what 
accuracy is is how much you are like uh, you know from from the target right whereas precision is basically how clustered your different views are your different shots are your different attempts are there is a huge difference between you know accuracy and precision now the problem here is this ladies and gentlemen is that if you are right you know if numbers give us an impression of precision right the problem is this, we will probably end up spending a lot of time trying to figure out how like a much error there is, you know, in between the different estimates we are making. But at the same time, we are completely out of the right target, right? This has happened time and time again in history. All you need to do is to actually look at you know like uh you know when you when companies are buying and when a company is buying another company right what happened is this you know if you want to know like what is the price of the company that you are looking at buying now unlike you go into a shop supermarket and you want to buy something what is so good about supermarket or any shops out there is that the price is actually shown Right. So you don't have to actually all you need to do is that, OK, you know, can I afford the, like, to pay the price or do I find the price to be acceptable? But if you were to go and buy a company, there is never a price tag. It doesn't have a price tag dangling to show how much the company is, like, you know, is, is, you know, you, 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 like it's cost. Right. So what you would need to do then is that you need to go and figure out how much the company is actually worth to you. OK, and therefore, once you actually establish what is the value of the, you know, of the company to you, you can then go and figure out what the price is. This is how we always work. You know, if you were going to buy a secondhand car, secondhand cars have got no like it's, it's you know, like a, you would ask yourself, how much is this car worth to me? Right. And then I will decide on whether the price like what the price is. Same thing here. Right. You know, if you like uh, the problem here is that because you have to actually establish what the value of the company you are like a, you know you, like a, you you really want to shoot for right um you know you have a chance that by focusing on the precision you will end up overpaying right in a sense that you know you would say oh i really want this company and therefore i am going to adjust the all these um you know assumptions all these like a uh, 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 guessing like all these estimate all the est like uh, estimates i'm throwing into to the analysis so you are but, but at the same time you're completely departing from the actual value of the business right so what i'm saying is this it like uh, you know like uh, it gives us the like illusion of precision but we are probably going to look at the wrong things you know a lot of the time and it happens before second is this even though the numbers can give you a sense of objectivity if you think about it right all analysis financial analysis comes from assumptions, right? Like, you know, if like if I were to ask you Bitcoin, all right? You know, if I were to ask you, is the price of Bitcoin worth it today? Okay, like, I don't know what the price is like uh, of Bitcoin today, but is it like, uh, is, it, is it worth it today, right? Now, it looks like, it looks like uh, the price of Bitcoins, right? Is objective because like you don't decide it, I don't decide it as America, as a matter of fact, it is the supply and demand that actually decides it, nothing else, you know, which is, which is quite crazy, all right? But the thing here is this, how the, even though it is objectively determined, the price, supply and demand, the question here is what are the assumptions that the buyers and the sellers are actually holding? By the same token, right? The token, you know, by the same token, what you can see is that any uh, analysis that involves a huge use of numbers, there has got to be some assumptions, subjective assumptions that baked in, that is built into the analysis in order to drive the numbers. In short, what I'm trying to say is this, numbers does not actually show objectivity it is you know like uh, showing a probably a selected set of subjectivity right so numbers are not as rigorous or robust as we like to think it is right now what about like a like a what about stories right why do we care about stories i think they're like a, the reasons why people care about stories is this one is that the world is getting more and more complicated 
All right. So if you were right, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, if you want to actually like, uh, you know, if you look at the, 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 the current war in Ukraine, right? If you look at how the Russian government, like, uh, you know, like, uh, is like uh, what the gov Russian government is doing, is not actually using numbers. It is actually using stories to tell the people why it is imp like a, it is necessary for Russian like uh, forces to actually go in to Ukraine. You like, uh, you know, it, it there is a stories that needs to be told, and the reasons why stories are powerful is because it actually gets us people to actually like uh, you know to to actually make it much easier to for people to actually buy in it's like uh, you know if you can actually describe your stories like uh, like uh, you know if you can describe your actions in a way that is uh, you know convincing right people will tend to even overlook the you know like uh, the small inaccuracies inaccuracies or inconsistencies right let me give you an example right one of the like a big like a one of the large like a one of the like a biggest phenomenon um, phenomena in uh, in last year in the finance world was basically a company the rise and rise and rise of a company called Arc Capital you probably have never heard of it but what our capital like uh, our capital is like uh, is owned and founded by the current ceo whose name is kathy wood kathy wood was i don't even remember how many times basically like uh, being seen as the goddess of investment all right so she was able to like uh, she put like a uh, she started this investment company and the investment that she has been like uh, you know she put together is actually built like a uh, going up like a uh, skyrocketed the value just keep on going up and up and up and up and up and up right so now the reasons why if you look deeper as to like a uh, why her, her 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 investment is growing in size and making so much money and therefore generating so much attention is simply because she actually bought a lot of tesla right so if tesla actually like uh, goes up in price her value the value of her investment goes up right simple as that but what is i think is critical was this i even went to the uh, because I, I was so surprised by the uh, element you know, of, of like, uh, you know, how, 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 how it is possible, you know, to go from like, uh, no one has ever heard of, and then all of a sudden, everyone is talking about it, right? If you were to look at the, uh, you know, the, the, the website of our capital, it used to be the case anyway, I haven't checked it like uh, lately. What you will find is that, you know, they even produce video on what they actually like uh, put together. So in one video, they basically, so they, they, they put together, they show, they describe, she, Kathy Wood, this, like described, how her company has got a team of experts that actually does like a nothing but to do close examinations of the various types of frontier technologies, including AI, including driverless cars, whatever you like to call it. And therefore, the image, the idea, the message that like a, she was actually like a offering, right, was basically the fact that, you know, it is rigorous analysis going for the most promising technologies and we invest in them. And that's the reasons why her fund is actually the growing and growing and growing and growing and growing, even though one may argue that most of the growth actually comes from Tesla like a share price right so once again you know like a, what i'm trying to say here is this you know if like a one can build a story right um, you can actually get people to be hooked up and at the same time they will question less about you know the like uh, the the inaccuracies this is one reason why i think fake news is actually like uh, doing very 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 well because you know the more convincing it is the less you would contest Right now, if you look at the other side of the war, right, you know, like uh, Shilinsky, President Shilinsky of Ukraine, one of the biggest problems he actually faces naturally is the war. But one of the biggest problem like uh, he is facing is that, you know, he would not like uh, the world outside of Ukraine will become less and less interest as the war goes on, because if you know, if, you know, the media. You know, like every in every single country, what they tend to do, or people, governments would tend to like uh, do is, you know, you cannot talk about the same thing, supplying weapons every day for the like, uh, you know, for 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 a long time. So what Shilinsky actually did was he was actually going to different governments, 
to actually ask for what, like uh, weapons to actually fight the war, right? Now, what he does, like which I find fascinating is this, for every single government he, he talked to, right? Whether it's the UK addressing the German parliament or like uh, in talking to the EU, talking to the, is like, uh, you know, the different countries, right? What he would actually do is to basically adjust the story. He would actually go and keep the story fresh for different audience. The reason is simple, because if you keep on telling the same stories again and again and again, sooner or later, people will stop buying it. Notice then, you know, what Elon Musk is always actually like, a, you know, what Elon Musk is doing, okay? You just, you need to keep on changing the stories to refresh people's idea. And this, I think, is one of the, the key ways, like, a, you know, when it comes to using like a, a narratives in business. So, you know, for like, as I mentioned earlier, right, in order to get people to actually buy your like, a, you know, buy like invest money, put money into your business, right? Or whether it is, you know, getting people to buy like, a, you know, like a, to buy your products or actually getting fund like a people to fund your business, right? You know, if you want to start your own like a business, Right. If you want to actually go for a startup, you have got pretty much no profitability. You are not making money. How do you then get people to put the money into your business? The answer, of course, is you need to tell a great stories. Just like how do you get people to actually get to work in your startups when you know that you won't be able to pay them as well as, for instance, that what they would otherwise be able to get, you know, in the um in the, uh, uh, you know, in the, uh, like, uh, you know, when they are actually, uh, 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 you like, you're working for bigger companies. The answer here is this. What you would do is, you know what? Listen, come and work for me. I will give you some shares. But wait a minute. You will be saying, why should I accept shares, right? Unless you would, like, you think that the shares is going to worth a lot of money and worth all that, like, you know, worth so much that it will compensate for a lower salary that you're receiving today. The answer, of course, is this. I will, like, uh, you know, like, uh, if you, like, uh, my shares, like, uh, the shares I am giving to you, right, the company is going to do so well that, you know, you would be, like, uh, you know, it will worth your effort. In short, we like, you know, as entrepreneurs, right, you are going to tell stories. Same thing with the customers, right? You know, how do you actually get the customers to buy things? You know, how do you get customers to actually like a pay for like a to pay premium prices? How do you actually get, you know, customers to actually go like a, go and upgrade their packages? How do you actually get customers to buy a new product from you, right? You know, you basically have to find a way to actually put in a narrative, a storyline, right? Now, the question here is, the problem here is this. A lot of the time, you know, like, uh, you know, stories actually like, uh, you know, like people can no longer actually separate fictions like uh, from fantasies. All right. So here is a guy like, uh, you know, here is a, like a, a case study of, you know, someone called Bernie Madoff. You probably have never heard of him. And what who Bernie Madoff was like, uh, so he I think he like uh, he was uh, uh, um, a powerful figure in like uh, Wall Street about I think now come to think of it about 10 years ago. And uh, he actually like uh, basically runs like a, a very, very profitable uh, fund, uh, 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 you know, uh, have, have got like, a, you know, run a very, very successful investment company, which in the end turned out to be a complete fraud, complete fraud. All right. So. And like I so like uh, he was actually like uh, sent to jail, I think for 150 years. So like, I think he actually died, like uh, I can't remember. I think he actually died in the, uh, in, the in like uh, in, uh, in, in, in prisons and disgrace. But what is interesting was basically is like, uh, so what he like, uh, what he was doing was simple, right? He was basically saying this, you know, he was saying, listen, you know, let's say uh, uh, we have got Abdul. He said, listen, Abdul, I have got a product that you want to invest, like uh, you want to invest in and we'll make money for you. Uh, I said up to okay, hand over the money like uh, he invested, right? And then you know what? Bernie Madoff actually hand over returns money profit to Abdul. So Abdul is happy. The question here is where did Abdul actually find the money? As it turned out, how he actually found the money was he actually go and talk to Francis like a Francisca, like Francisca. I said, Francisca, would you be interested in investing in this product? Francisca's hand over the money and then Madoff actually give the money to, you know, hand over the money to Abdul. Now, 
question is, how is he going to pay Francisca then? The answer, of course, is he would sell the same like the products to Eleanor, and Eleanor hand over the money, and Eleanor would pass, like Adina's money would be passed on to Francisca. How is he going to pay Eleanor then? Of course, he would ask me to pay, and by it, I would pay him the money, and he would basically pay <coughs> Eleanor from the money that I hand over. So in the other words, it is a complete Ponzi scheme. This is basically how, how, it, how it all works. Now, the brilliant bit here is that like when he was trying to actually sell this scam, right, is that he would basically say, one, it is way too complicated for the outsiders, right? There is no need for anyone to know the details because you like, you know, the details, you either you don't understand or it is too private. I'm not going to share the, the secret recipe, the secret sauce with you, right? Make it like a, you know, make it, uh, you know, like a, make it intriguing in a sense that there must be something that is tremendously complicated and sophisticated there that is actually like a, that is actually working. All right. But when, in the end, there is nothing working. The second is, you know, the investment game is so well designed that it never lose money, even in the bad months, not bad months, bad months for the market. So he make it like a, you know, he actually like a, uh, you know, a, a narrative like this. But perhaps the most genius one, if you ask me, is the third one. And it says this, you know, basically the strategy would not generate outrageous return, but only very like a, a moderate return. Now think about it. This is, I think, you know, if you ask me, this is a, like, you know, this is genius. The reason is if you actually say that something is going to generate outrageous return, right? No one would buy it. You know, it's like, a, you know, like a, this is a scam, you know, like, a, you know, anyone that is going to tell you that you will be able to double your profit. So, you know, every time when you actually go and like uh, try to watch a YouTube video, there's always someone like uh, on the ad that basically tells you how about trying to make 500,000 pounds in a single month, right? You know, that type of thing, complete rubbish. No one would buy. I mean, like, frankly, how like uh, who can actually make 500,000? I mean, what kind of jobs can you actually make 500,000 pounds a month? unless you play football right? or like a soccer, right? So, you know, it is like a impossible. That is way too outrageous. But he basically says, listen, it is it's not going to exception. It's not going to be very big, the returns, but you are going to get consistent, like a, you know, like a return, you know, like a moderate return, which I find to be fascinating. All right. So basically, that is like, a, you know, like a, what I want to actually like I say about like a Bernie, like a Madoff, how he actually tells a story. Now, I'm not asking you to scam or anything, but what I'm trying to do is to highlight the fact that, you know, storytelling tell, like, is important. What I think is, is truly like, a, you know, the, you know, the, the, the what is really driving the um, the storytelling, like, a, 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 you know, like a force is that we are living in a world that is there is way too much data available. There is way too much like a technologies available. Think about it. If you have got a lot of data points, there is no way we can actually like, uh, you know, remember the, uh, you know, like uh, remember all the data points, right? You will like, uh, you know, there is no way you can actually remember, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, like uh, whether something is, you know, that if especially when the data is coming through, right, every day, and therefore, you know, you have got same information, like you have got updated information all the time. It's very, very difficult, not just to follow, but also to retain the information. So technologies has actually make things very, very difficult. As a matter of fact, in very many ways, the arrival of technologies have just add an extra layer, you know, of complexity in our understanding of where, like, uh, where things are, like, uh, where things are happening. So the result is this, you know, we, our brain is overloaded, and therefore we need to actually go and find some consistencies. And that's when actually, like, uh, it arrives, you know, the consistency of the, uh, you know, like the consistency in the sense of a story, all right? So now let us try to actually look at the question here is, if you think about it, all right, Tesla 210, question here is where is Tesla going? Like, uh, you know, where, where is Tesla? Like, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, where is it coming from, right? Where, like, you know, how, how is it possible, right? How is it possible that it has got a, a much, so much, like a, such a high, uh, a price, right? A share price. The answer, of course, is this: Elon Musk has been talking about, like, you know, like, uh, you know, like, uh, where, like, uh, the cars are, like, uh, you know, the electric cars of market is going. 
I was actually reading the Financial Times just now. He is basically saying that by 2024, two years from now, he will, they will start the production of robo-taxi, basically driverless cars. Now, if you think about it, this is exciting and you know, like a, it actually drives a lot of attention and therefore attractiveness to investors to put their money into the business. But if you were to think about it, it is like a, you know, it is probably not as, uh, you know, not as like a, 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 you know, not as easy as he like a, as he makes it. The reason is simple, because if you look at you know a driverless car, right, you know. What well, a driver's car is like needed, right? You know, and and we heard like I heard a lot about it is that in China there are a lot more and more like a, you know driverless cars like a, you know uh, companies uh, testing it, prototyping it, you know, coming up with new cars. But what is critical, if you were to ask me, when it comes to the driver's car, is basically you need to make sure that you build sensors on on the road along the way. Otherwise, you know, if there are no sensors or receivers, there is no way the data on the car can actually be actually like a bound out, you know, to be processed and new data actually comes in to be absorbed by the car so that the car can actually respond. Now, my first question here is, if you are in the UK, at least, if the governments do not even have the money, does not even have the money to actually like, a, you know, like a put like a like a to fix the holes on the roads, I was wondering who would actually be investing in this, right? You know, I, I you know, like, it, because without this, I don't think, you know, like, uh, uh, um, driverless cars would work. Second is this, one of the most critical elements, and I don't think the technology is there yet, is this, latency. What is latency? What it means is this, you simply cannot afford to have the slightest delay when it comes to receiving and sending out the data. Because like, uh, you know, if there is something like an obstacle, like uh, in front, right? A second or two seconds of latency could actually mean like a life and death, right? The question here is, I don't think there is any technologies right now that has got zero latency. You know, like, uh, you know, you can go ahead and like, you can try to fix it, but it's still expensive, right? You know, we probably have a lot of experience like uh, right now, you know, you know, our Wi-Fi every now and then is down. Um, our like a Zoom, you know, there's so many times it is actually frozen or slow that like, a, or, or just like a missing a frame, right? We like, you know, if we cannot even get Wi-Fi or Zoom to actually like uh, to eliminate latency, it will be a very, very like a, a big stretch. If we were to actually think about cars being able to get a, like, a, you know, to be able to actually like have no latency at all whatsoever all i'm saying here is this you know you know i think like i you know as much as elon musk right you know but i mean he is elon like i'm not who am i to actually argue against him but in my humble opinion right um the 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 the, <clears throat> the picture he is actually selling right is a bit you know like a way too much like a way too far into the future i probably like you know in my in my view right i don't even think in my lifetime i will be able to see uh, the popularization of driverless cars maybe for you guys at some point of your time in the future but probably not me so i think you know like uh you know we we like uh you know like uh, you know, the fact that the, we will start to see like a driverless cars, like, a, you know, on, on the road, you know, serving the public or, or at least, you know, like a basically in production in 2024, probably is a way to actually get people to be excited. And don't forget, when you get people to be excited, share price actually goes up and hence, right? So what I'm saying here is this, ladies and gentlemen, is that, you know, if, uh, you know, if you actually like, uh, you know, like, a, you know, like a, like paint a beautiful stories, you know, like, uh, you know, like a beautiful stories, you can actually get you like, uh, you know, like, uh, get people to be very, very excited. Now, Frankly, I think like, uh, you know, there is a chance that our friend Elon Musk here is actually falling into not a trap, but, you know, it's a, you know, it's a behavioral thing, you know, that we like a, we all have got. And that is this. If you talk about something, you know, for long enough, and if there are enough people around you talk about the same thing for long enough, you will actually start to believe it. In short, right, if all of us here, you know, basically say that, you know, by 2024, we are going to be able to see robo-taxis, chances are we will even believe it 
Yeah, and this is how, like, uh, you know, general nature, like, uh, you know, general nature actually works, you know, in 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 you know in our brain, right? So, you know, like, uh, I'm 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 not saying that Elon Musk is wrong or de like deliberately misguided, like a mis like a misleading us, but you know, the fact is this, you know. The level of confidence is probably like uh, overrated or like uh, you know overpriced, overvalued, if you like. So what am I gonna do, right? Like what, are, like, what are we gonna do, right? So basically, I think like uh, you know ultimately, ultimately, what is happening is this. You know, if I were to actually paint the picture, is that one, we're living in a world that is full of way too much data, way too much numbers, right? At the same time, our social context, right? The what is happening around us is really happening way too fast. On top of that, there is like a lots of like a technologies which actually speed up things of development or like, a, you know, create additional uh, layers of complexities, right? You know, uh, when it comes to understanding how the world works. Therefore, in order to actually like for us to make sense, we start to rely a lot more on narrative. So, you know, if you look at, right, you know, I was, if you look at how, like a, how, uh, um, how, how, Tesla is actually doing operationally. What you will find is this: the company is making money. They're like a right, but the company is making money because one, it has actually lowered the price of Tesla cars and therefore increasing the demand, and two, it has actually cut bonuses and salaries of the different staff. So, if you think about it, the share price is up here. But the companies operationally, right, <clears throat> is actually relying on like a, you know cutting price and cutting like a people's salary. The difference has got to be you know like a, you know like a, the narrative you know like, as, like, you know it must be the narrative that is driving it because you know if you are focusing on operations right you know operational side you should be much closer to Toyota rather than you know what Tesla is right now. So narratives. Plays like a plays a very very big role, and therefore, it actually a lot of the time we are now relying a lot more on uh, a narrative to like a think about to imagine a future, and therefore, you know, coming up with the actions. So, question here, like, and this is the last thing I want to mention, right? Again, you know, if you have got any questions, please feel free to put it into the um, you know, like a, into the Q and A box, right? And what are we going to do in this world, right? You know, how are you, uh, how should we all prepare for it? I think there are a couple of things, right? You know, first um, is that we do need to understand that the, like, the world is getting more and more complex like, and more layered. When I say complex, it's not necessarily getting more um, sophisticated. Complex actually is a term that um, uh, many scientists would use to mean how different things are actually connected. And, you know, in a world that is like, uh, you know, that is more and more technology driven, you know, something like, uh, you know, something is happening, right? You know, can have a major consequence. You know, we have all heard of the concept of butterfly effect, right? Something, you know, like a butterfly flipping, you know, like uh, the wings in South America can actually have got like an impact on the other side of the world. Um, in a world that is like a connected, that is complexity. You know, things are all connected and therefore it is becoming more and more difficult to make sense. So uh, we do need to actually like, uh, up, like uh, up our skills when it comes to like uh, looking at the numbers, you know, like, uh, you know, being able to do analysis. But I think at the same time, you know, uh, business schools like, uh, you know, and, and, you know, educators, uh, like there is a need to start thinking about you know, thinking about how to actually like uh, take advantages of narratives, right? Um, and 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 you know, like uh, not just being able to um, you know like uh, come up with the ability to do have the ability to do the numbers, but also to actually think about how to package the numbers in the right way. Again, you know, I'm not basically suggesting that you know, like uh, you know, like like all tools, right? You can use it for good or you can use it for bad. But what I'm saying here is that you know, uh, as the world comes along, getting more and more difficult, narratives plays a much much more important role, and therefore. And last thing I think is clear is not just about the ability to construct or like a produce narratives and numbers. It is also important to have the ability to see through narratives, right? So you like uh, you know like like <clears throat> if you were to ask me, right? Um, whereas Tesla two hundred and ten is probably inflated by Elon Musk vision and somehow people buying it. My question here is Apple, you know. 
if Apple, like I can understand why Meta has, has got a 16 or like only 16. As we all know, Meta is not doing like a, a Facebook was not doing well, right? You know, it's dwindling. None of you actually use Facebook, right? Um, so what like a Zuckerberg decided to do is basically completely change like uh, the names, right? And focus all the effort on the metaverse. Now, by creating a new vision, right? He actually manages to actually push up the uh, like uh, you know the the you know the, uh, the the share price, or at least maintain the share price, even though the rest of the comp the company is actually dwindling in terms of the money it is making. Right? It is focusing on something. The question here is, you know, metaverse. How many people actually want to use it? Right? You know, probably all of us are interested in it, but how many people would actually use it remains a big question mark. And yet, you can see that Zuckerberg decided to actually put in like all the money on the table on, onto this. And that is 16 times. The question I have got, and I've got no answer to it, and I will leave that to you guys, is this. Apple is trading at 27 times, which basically means that investors are all expecting Apple to come up with something great. Having said that, if you were to ask you, like uh, ask, ask me, when was the, what was the last truly innovative product that Apple came up with? I would probably say it's the iPad. Everything after that is either like it didn't go anywhere or it's nothing extraordinary, you know, including that like, uh, you know, the, the Apple TV, right? You know, the uh, like Apple, like, you know, like an uh, Apple, you know, streaming network. It's got nothing, right? Everything else, the phones, the uh, the laptops, right? You know, it is still basically just going a gradual, like a gradual upwards, right? A gradual, like, a, you know, gradual improvements, which basically means that the share, like investors are expecting something, but how do you, what are they actually expecting, right? And more importantly, Apple needs to maintain this level of share price, right? So Apple ultimately would have to come up with a new narrative, something to actually get the investors to be excited. The question is what? Ladies and gentlemen, this is where I want to stop. And uh, since I've got like, uh, I see no questions in the Q&A box, right? Uh, I, don't, I don't think, like, uh, I don't see any questions. Um, therefore, I am going to leave it to like, uh, you know, leave it here and pass the like, uh, pass the like, uh, pass it back to Eleanor. But may I take this opportunity to say thank you very, very much for your like, uh, you know, for your attention. And thank you. I'm, I'm really hoping that you have actually picked up a thing or two from this, like, uh, you know, from from this, uh, uh, you know, from the past 45 minutes. Thank you so much for like uh, taking the time to listen to me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for like uh, for coming. Okay, so uh, as we said before, a recording of this webinar will be sent out in the follow-up email in the next few days. And uh, we also have many events for you from webinars to one-to-one to one virtual meetings. So please go to our website, halt.edu slash events to find out more and register to attend the HALT event. So that's all from us today. Thank you very much for your class, Professor Terrence. We hope thank to have you, you again uh, soon. And thank, uh, thank you. you, everyone, for joining us. We hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye. Take care, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Eleanor.